Hey YouTube, welcome back. We knew you couldn't stay away. MDEX Music here. And what we have for you today is the beginning of a comprehensive series on how to write music using Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro. What we want to be able to do is get you guys to identify the elements in songs that keep showing up over and over again, the things that make them uh, successful and accessible and fun to play and easy to listen to. Uh, what are these elements? Uh, why do they work? Why do they keep showing up? We want you guys to have an awareness of your surroundings with regard to harmony, being able to navigate the map and why that's important and why using an app like Mapping Tonal Harmony can make that a bit more accessible and easier. So what we're not going to do is basically like spoon feed you the formula and say do this, do this, do this, do this. What we hope to do and what you can expect to take away from this series is a better understanding of music and the freedom and empowerment that comes with that. These are the elements. These are where they show up. You can use them or not. And it's basically up to you uh, to know how you want to write your song or arrange your arrangement. So this context through understanding is what we hope to give you guys through this series. And we're going to do that through several genres. We're going to decode pop music. We're going to decode classical music. We're going to decode jazz. We're going to decode blues. And we'll take songs from each of these genres, break them down, show you why they work, and then you'll be able to identify them and use them on your own. So to kick off our series, how to write music using Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro, we're going to start by decoding Bob Marley. We're going to look at some pop music. No woman, no cry. All right, so here's our song. No woman, no cry. No woman, no cry. All right, so here's our progression. It's it's pretty straightforward. It's just C, G over B, or we can just play G, uh, A minor, and F. Those are the only four chords we're gonna need to get through this analysis. It's the only four chords Bob Marley used to write one of his most recognizable and catchy tunes of all time. All right, so you have C, G over B, A minor, F, and then C, F, C, G. All right, so all the primary chords and one secondary. Let's go ahead and plug this into our map so you can see how we're gonna do this through Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro. Okay, so just in case you're new to Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro and, and, and the interface we're using here, we're just gonna gloss over it real quick as far as basic elements, ideas, and how to navigate it. Right, so what you're looking at here are just the three regions we use when mapping tonal harmony. We have the tonic region down here, the subdominant region over there, and the dominant region over there, and all the chords that go along with each region. So our map is currently calibrated to the key of C, that's why the tonic chord is C, and that's why all the chords you see on the map currently are relative to C. So in other words, you're not gonna see a B major or anything like that, because in the key of C, without going to more complicated version of the map, you're not gonna see a B chord. So if I want to change the key we're in, if I want to change the map's calibration to a different key that might have a B chord, like let's say E, now I see in the dominant region as my five chord, the B chord, or I can just go to the key of B, and now everything's calibrated to the key of B. So the chords are always going to change, at least their names, uh, with regard to what key you're in, all right? So let's talk a little bit more about what is in front of you on the map. What you basically have here are little tiny circles of fifths, and the chords geographically located around the circle of fifths are related to where they would be in the circle of fifths. And the chords on the outside of each circle represent the chords of C major, we're in C. The chords on the inside of each circle represent the chords of C minor. C is parallel minor. So you have F and D minor seven over here in the subdominant area. And on the inside circle, all the chords specific to C minor in the subdominant area. And the same thing over here in the dominant region. Right? The reason they're both there at the same time is, if you remember from our previous series, we talked about sometimes you can borrow from minor keys if you're in a major. Usually doesn't go the other way around, but it's good to know 
that those cards, those chords are there if you need to use them to reharm something or write something. Uh, our song's in C major, uh, so I don't know if we were going to reharm it, we could use some of those chords on the inside circle. We're not going to do that today. If you're interested in that, check out our previous series on reharmonization using map mapping Tonal Harmony Pro. Also, if you want a more like in-depth explanation of the map and just reharmonization in general, we're going to uh, put a link to a previous video we made right there. You should check that out. We're just touching on some of the main ideas right now. So aside from that, we talked about the key, what the chords on the inside of the circle are, what the chords on the outside of the circle are. And one really, really important feature that I'm gonna, we're kind of really going to promote a lot through the series is to not see the chords uh, by their name, but rather by their function. How do they function? How do they move to and from one another within the key you're playing in? This will never change. I can change the key now to F. You still see 1, 4, 5. I can change it to D. All right, so this idea of seeing the movement of chord to chord relative to the map, relative to these regions and their neighborhoods will really, really help you in understanding the similarities uh, between songs, comparing and contrasting them. So if I see a 2-5-1 as a 2-5-1, it really doesn't matter what key it's in. I can figure out what the chords. The chord names are a consequence of these functions. Okay, They're not really that important per se. Obviously, you need to know them if you have to play them on your instrument, but try to see the harmonization and the analysis of the harmonization that we're going to do through this series as a series of uh, functions or Roman numerals, 251, 451, authentic cadence, playable cadence, whatever. So that's a basic synopsis of how we're going to view the map and how it works. <laughs>